Club Express, updating your member profile. Club Express makes it very convenient for members of your club or organization to view and update their profile. This might be a simple change of email address, edit a member's biography, print out a payment receipt, or review the event history. These and many more profile tasks can be accomplished directly by the member without having to involve an administrator, and this makes for timely updates and eliminates an administrative bottleneck. In this video, we'll show you how to update your profile and modify your preferences for using the website. We'll also show you how to view your transaction and payment history, and how to get receipts, how to update your username and password, and how to update your forum preferences. We're already logged into one of our demo websites as Martin Smith, who also happens to be a club administrator. When logged in, you'll see the login panel. It will usually be near the top of the website, but it might be in a left side column. You can see that the website knows who we are. It shows Martin's name, and when you mouse over the name, a menu appears where you can go directly to the profile page. There are also options to view your standard directory entry, log in as a different user, and log out. Martin also has a payment due, perhaps for a membership renewal, a product purchase, or even an event registration. So a menu choice is added that will display the payments page. When we click on the profile link, your personal profile is displayed. Here is where you can view and update your entries in the club's database. At the top, there's a membership summary which shows your member type, membership status and expiration date, the date you joined the club, and the date you last renewed your membership. If there are any errors reported for your email address, a link is displayed that takes you to a page where you can see the errors and optionally update the information. If your club has installed the optional membership card module, you can download your membership card here. If your club has chapters, or if you have a membership that allows additional people to be part of your membership, a choice is presented called either chapters and additional members or additional members in your account. In this case, the club has chapters and Martin has a family membership. Because Martin already has additional members, a panel with a few of their photos is displayed. To view or update the information, you can click on a photo or click on the link in the More Members panel. There are options to edit the information or to remove somebody or add additional family members. Once again, this screen will be slightly different depending on which options your club has enabled. As a reminder, if you have questions about how to use any screen, you can click on the help icon for detailed instructions. Many of these help screens also include a tutorial video that demonstrates the topic at hand. You can also download and print a variety of instruction manuals. Back at the profile screen, we also see a direct link to this video so you and other members can review what can be done from this page. Before we look at the rest of the page, it's important to note that the items and item names on the page might be different from what we show here. There may be fewer items and there may be more items. Things that determine the display include functions that have been renamed via the control panel, standard functions that have been enabled, for example, blogs or photo albums, optional added cost functions that have been enabled, for example, the resource schedule that shows reservation histories, or the storefront module lists available downloads. Whether your organization uses subgroups, for example, regions, districts, and chapters, and whether you're reviewing your own profile, or you're an administrator who's updating another member's profile. For example, only a member can change the username or password. An administrator looking at another member's profile can only send a password reset request. Now let's look at a series of panels containing information in the database that you can update. We'll focus on the most common items and touch on some of the optional modules. When you click Basic Member Information, you'll see the contact form that allows you to update your name, your address, phone numbers, email addresses, and other fields. Again, your form may be slightly different from the one we're looking at here. This may depend whether people join your club through their personal lives or through business and professional lives. It also shows fields the club has specifically enabled. For example, some clubs and associations may not collect spouse information or nicknames. Some may not collect two addresses or work information. When you're done with this page and all of the other pages accessible from the profile page, Click Save to update the information in the database and return to the profile page, or you can click Cancel to return without saving. Every organization has information that they want to collect on members, which is unique to that organization. 
and that information will appear on the additional member data screen. In this case, because this is a ballooning club, we collect some information on your interest in ballooning and willingness to help with club activities. The Member Directory option lets you update your preferences for the Member Directory. Once again, this screen may be slightly different depending on what your club is collecting. Most clubs allow you to control your visibility in the directory, and that's done using this first option. There are eight separate settings, and you pick the setting based on which information you want to show to other members of the club. Let's say I want to show my bio, my email address, but not my phone number or regular address. I would select this option. The club may be collecting birthday and anniversary information, and you would enter them here. The club may be collecting social networking links, so if you have a Facebook page, a Twitter feed, or another social network link that you want to share with other members, you can do that here. The biography panel is like a miniature word processor. You can type in some text. We can then highlight the text, make it bold, and change the font size and color. There are some basic formatting options, and you can also use this editor to create links. For example, to a personal website, and you can insert photos or images from your local hard disk. At the bottom of the screen is where you can insert a photo by choosing a file from your computer. The system will resize the photo automatically, but it's best to pick a fairly small photo. If the business directory is enabled, click this link to enter the basic information about your business. You can select the business category and type from the list. You may continue adding classifications until you reach the maximum defined amount. Continue editing by adding contact name, address, social networking links, and business description. Click Username Password to change your login information. This displays a screen where you can change your username. You'll always have to re-enter your password because of how we store it internally. There's also an option to remember you on this computer, so you don't have to type in your username and password each time you log in. Note that it's important not to check that option if two or more people within your family share the same computer and might be logging into the website with different usernames and passwords. Because if you check the Remember Me option, when you come back to the website and click Login, you're logged in automatically using one account. However, once logged in, you can always click on your name and choose Login as a different user, and the login screen will be presented. Note that only a member can change their username and password. If you are an administrator who's viewing another member's profile, the username password choice is replaced by one that says Reset Password. This sends the same email as if the user had clicked the Forgot My Username Password link on the login screen. This sends an email to the member with a temporary password so the member can log in and change the password to something they want to keep. The mobile app panel appears only if your club has a custom mobile application. The channel membership item displays the channels, which are special interest groups, that you're currently a member of. Many are automatically based on your activity in the club. For example, you're on a committee or you joined an interest group, but you cannot directly remove yourself from these channels. However, you can elect not to participate in the channel. Click the edit icon and select hidden. This will remove the channel from the menu on the mobile app and prevent any other channel activity. There may also be optional channels that you can join or quit. The mobile profile option lets you choose a handle, avatar photo, default channel, and whether or not you want to show in meets, which is a feature of the mobile app where members can find each other based on location and arrange to meet. The items in the More Member Options panel will vary depending on the features you've enabled for your organization. Let's look at a few of them. Click on Privacy, Cancel, Remove to update your privacy settings. For example, setting whether or not you want to receive blast emails and if you allow sharing of your data. This is also where you can cancel your membership or cancel and have your information removed completely from the organization's database. By default, Club Express does not store any credit card information. If you do a credit card transaction through the website, as soon as that transaction is complete, all credit card information is removed. Click Credit Card if you want to store your credit card information in the system. If you choose to do so, then that information is stored fully encrypted and very secure. Again, this is completely optional. The optional additional charges page lets you purchase additional items and membership options. 
Sometimes additional charges are presented only during initial sign-up, for example, an initiation fee, but other items may always be available. For example, a coffee mug, or signing up to receive printed newsletters, and you can select them here and then proceed to the payment screen. As mentioned earlier, there's a link where you can view and update any additional members and chapter settings for your account. This link brings us to the same screen that we saw earlier. If Member Achievements has been enabled in the People Options module, you can see a read-only list of achievements that have been entered for the member by an administrator, and an administrator can add, remove, and edit the achievements. If your organization has enabled member attachments and allows members to upload their own files for their profile, perhaps a resume, licenses, or certifications, click the Attachments link to upload the required or optional files, update existing files, or delete files. If gift memberships has been enabled, click this link to view your gift memberships. You can pay for outstanding gift memberships, review past gift memberships, print out gift memberships that you've already paid for, and if the gift membership has been redeemed, see when it was used. The items in the Histories panel also varies depending on features enabled for your organization. Click on Transaction History to display every transaction that we've done with the club. For example, we can see that Martin has made a donation and has not yet paid for it. And we can see an event registration here that was paid in full. Clicking on the Details icon shows the details of that transaction and how it was paid. We can also go to Payment and Credit History and can see every payment that we have made to the club. We can see a receipt for each payment and optionally print the receipt. Keep in mind that this is a demo database, not a real club, so no credit card transactions are actually allowed. If you have credits with the club, those are shown at the bottom of the page. And if a credit is marked as complete, it means the credit was actually used. Click Event History to view a history of every event that you've registered for, and it will show you the details of those events. You can click on the Details icon for information, including everyone that Martin has signed up for the event. And if the club is recording attendance, you may also see your attendance saved on this screen. If donations have been enabled, you can see the status of any donations you've made and optionally pay for outstanding items. If the volunteering module is enabled, click on Volunteering to view and manage your future volunteering opportunities and see the history of past opportunities. If your club has enabled the optional resource module, you can click on Reservation History to see all of your reservations. This screen shows that Martin has reserved balloons, tennis courts, and conference rooms. Now let's look at forums. If your club has enabled discussion forums, there are some screens that allow you to view your preferences and memberships in the forums. Clicking on Forum General Preferences displays a screen that allows me to modify the preferences that apply to every forum. You can control how you want to view messages and threads, the sort order and display view, the email address to use, where you can use either the primary contact email or use a different email just for forums, and whether or not to allow people to reply to you privately. We can also specify preferences for messages and emails. Some forums will behave like list servers and send emails to you, so you can decide whether you want to receive those emails, what format you want the messages to be in, and what frequency you want to receive them in. For example, we can set it to receive each individual message immediately, or get a daily digest of all messages, or get a daily digest of subjects only. You can also decide whether to use a simple text editor in forums or choose to use an advanced editor with some formatting tools. You can also choose to have a standard signature that appears at the bottom of each message. And you can set the forum handle, and that is the name displayed with your messages in the forum. Other settings control if you want to display a link to your bio, show your location, and then the date and time of where you're located. You can set a separate photo avatar that only displays in forum messages. This can be a different photo from the one selected in the standard directory screen. And you can optionally check a box in each of the sections that applies the settings in that section to all of your forums. So those are the general preferences that apply to all forums. We can also modify the preferences for individual forums. In this case, the club has several forums, 
Keep in mind that some forums may or may not send emails and some forums may have optional membership. When we click on the edit icon for a forum, the screen displayed is similar to the general preferences screen, but the choices made on the screen are limited to this particular forum. In addition, we can choose to stop all forum emails, perhaps because we're going away on vacation and you don't want to get emails and you don't want to have to modify your preferences one at a time. When you come back from vacation, you can change that back to resume and now emails resume for the forums where we are supposed to receive emails. If you're subscribed to individual message threads, click the thread subscription item. This screen shows your current subscriptions and you can unsubscribe from any or all of them. In the Your Website Functions pane, there are a few more links. If your club is defined interest groups, click on interest so you can update your preferences for all of those interest groups. So maybe I'm no longer interested in junior flyers, but want to add Chase Crew. Just check or uncheck the boxes and save the page. If your club lets members create photo albums, the photo albums option displays a page where you can add new albums and manage the content of existing albums. To create a new album, click the Add Photo Album button, give the album a name, and set the visibility options. When you save the form, you can then edit the new album and upload photos into it. This club has enabled the collectibles module so members can keep a list of balloons that they own or use. Click on collectibles to see your items. Each has a set of answers to questions about the item, and you can display a photo or an album for each item. This club has enabled the storefront module and has defined some items as digital purchases that have files attached to the items. This is often used when purchasing an ebook that can be read on a computer or perhaps a PowerPoint presentation. When purchased, an email is sent to the user with links to download the required files. You can also click on Download Bank to see a list of files that are available for your download and also some links for file readers and other utilities. If your club has enabled blogs and you're configured as a blog author, click on Blogs to display a screen where you can add a new blog post and manage existing posts. So that ends our overview of the member profile screen. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.